I did it, it's working! Hi, in this video I will share my steps to build a 360 table rig. By the end of it, I hope you will be able to make your own with as little effort as possible and maybe why not improve the design. Once done with it, you should be able to film that. Many successful commercial filmmakers have their own 360 table rigs, so of course I had to have mine. I realized, however, that none of them really shared a tutorial that would fit, to, fit into my budget and for my needs. After several failed attempts and months of planning, I finally came up with the design that I can use. Warning, I'm not a very manual person, so I will explain some concepts that are very basic for some experienced people and I apologize for that in advance. You will need some aluminum extrusion frames with steel slots. As you can see, they are great to build things. They are solid and yet flexible and easy to work with. For my camera, I use a Sony Alpha 7S, so I think it's uh, strong enough for it. But if you have like heavier camera, more than three, four kilos, then you can uh, have a double frame. I'm gonna be using for this rig two aluminium uh, frames of 1.5 meters. So you're gonna need two lazy season plates that you're gonna stack on top of each other. They're gonna be tied to the extrusion frames and they're gonna be in the center of the rig. So the whole rig is spinning around them. To hold the extrusion frames and the uh, lazy season plates, you're gonna need some M4 uh, bolts and M4 nuts. So I'm not, I was not very familiar with the concept, but you have several size in bolts. You have M3, M4, M5, etc., etc., And it's um, regarding the diameter of the, of the bolts. So in this rig, I used M4 bolts to attach anything to the extrusion frames. And for tidying together the, the bottom base board and the tabletop board, I'm using M8. Um, bolts that are about 10 centimeter high. The rig is gonna be screwed into two bolts, wooden bolts, one at the bottom that is gonna be probably larger and more stable and one on the top as a tabletop is gonna be smaller bolts on top of which you're gonna place your products. So the rig is gonna fit on top of a table. Whatever table, it does not matter. The only important thing is that the, the table does not shake or wiggle. It has to be very stable. In my rig, I'm using a workbench, which has two advantages that are very stable by design, but is also at the right height because it's about one meter high. So I have plenty of space above to put lights and products and to walk around. I attach the rig to this workbench using a pair of clamps to make sure that everything is very stable. Regarding the tools, you mainly need a driller and an electric saw, and the rest are gonna be some basic handy tools. When I say I'm not a very manual person, look at what I did trying to pierce aluminium. The first step is to mount the two lazy season plates on the extrusion frames. You want to put them in the center, so you have from them one meter towards the, the lazy season plates and the camera, and on the other side of the frames, you want to have 50 centimeter from the lazy season plates and the back of the frames where you're gonna put your weight. If you are like me and you couldn't find the right size uh, extrusion frames, in that case 1.5 meters. You can always extend it by putting together two frames attached with a metal plate. Instead of fixing the rig to the baseboard directly, I thought to add a couple of aluminum bars. This adds a couple of extra centimeter of height and this allows me to make sure that once I put the camera and the weight on the rig, the frame is not gonna touch the baseboard. 
The first big issue I encountered was on the Lazy Susan plates where the opposite boards were touching each other. So to avoid any friction, I used flat head boards instead and I cut some of the boards to make them shorter. There's a little bit of space here that I'm trying to fix by cutting the the screw. So the solution I have that I found online, but it, appear, it appeared that I had this uh, uh, clamp and uh, you have this number here, M3.5, M4, M5, M3. And by just putting the screw in it of the right size, so let's put it in five, it's easier. And then choosing the right lens that you want here. By closing it, you're gonna cut the screw very easily. Pretty, pretty easy. So I'm gonna make you a demonstration of how to cut the, the screw. And moment of truth. Ah, <laughs> oh, done. All right. Yes, and you see, even by putting pressure on it, wait, it's still not gonna touch. So, I'm gonna fast forward the video and I'm gonna replace the three other bolts here uh, with the same technique. I'm gonna pierce the aluminum bar in four parts here to try to solidify uh, the base, the basement of, of this uh, rig making sure that it's as tight as possible to the baseball. And then I'm gonna use a normal screw for wood that's gonna nicely uh, get stuck into the wood ball. It's not what I, kind of what I expected to be. Uh, I wanted it to be like more stable and you see there's still some movement happening there. So instead of screws, I decided to use bolts to hold tight the bottom of the rig to the base bolt. Let's try if we can do one turn. It looks pretty smooth. Uh, I see there is some uh, moving here up and down. So I need to make sure with by putting weights they can balance out uh, this two, this part with the camera. So I will need to include some weight here. I hope it should be, it should be working, it should be solid enough. Um, and then the last part, what I'm gonna do now is this is my top bolt and I'm gonna screw it to the bottom bolt using this screw 160 cent 160 millimeter Okay, so exactly what I was afraid of happened, which is the table started to rotate while, you see, while rotating the, the rail. Um, that's because the screw under is moving. It's not stuck in the wood. So, I plan for that possibility, so I'm going to use this bolt. It's the same length, the same width, uh, but I hope I will be able to, it's going to hold into the wood. Let's see. Using a single bolt didn't help. The, top, the tabletop would still spin sometimes, while all I wanted it was to stay still like the baseboard. So I was stuck 
and I needed some time to think it over. This problem happened, so I focused on finishing the rest of the rig and come back to this problem later. These plates are gonna hold my weight, which is gonna help me to balance uh, the, the rig, the whole rig. Once the camera is gonna be there on the other side, it's probably gonna add at least four kilos of the camera plus the, the distance. Uh, it's probably gonna add a lot of weight on my rig and I'm afraid it's gonna go too much on one side. So I'm starting to add this kind of weight here, hoping it's gonna be enough to counterweight the other side. And on top of that, on top of the weight, I have this system here, which is going to be my background. So for the background, uh, it's going to be held on this uh, aluminum frame here. And I'm going to uh, bolt this piece of bolt wood here. And they're going to be bolted to, the, to the, this uh, holder. And on my wood, then I will be able to uh, put a black bolt that's going to be it can be like black, it can be other colors, I will change and I'm gonna uh, hold it thanks to the, the wooden piece here. On the camera side, I want it to be able to move freely up and down the extrusion frames, so I'm using some sort of quick release bolt nut. Then, in my first version, I use a piece of wood that I screwed to the frame on top of which, I'm adding a tripod head to secure my camera. All right, first test, let's see how it goes. The weight distribution is vital. When one side is heavier than the other, it will create friction on the bearings of the Lazy Susan. As you can see, with the uneven weight distribution, the ring doesn't even turn once. However, when distributing the weight correctly, it will spin on and on. So yesterday the issue I had with the spinning table was that the top table when I was spinning the rig was also turning with it. So my idea to fix it was to introduce two axes in the center and to, in order to make sure that the top table stays stable and doesn't move. It kind of improved a little bit the results. The only issue is that in this piece of wood at least, the, I don't think it's very stable and my uh, screws are wiggling, moving. So even if I screw it tight. So what I decided today is I'm gonna change the, the, the base bolt here that I have with a fresh one. And instead of two axes, I'm gonna put four. Um, and I'm hoping the result will be a rock solid uh, rig. So I found a much better way to cut uh, the bolt now with a metal saw. So I'm running every day. I used the four axes and I made sure that they are uh, stuck to each other. Um, but I don't put pressure, too much pressure between the two bolts, otherwise it's crushing my lazy plate, uh, lazy Susan plates. Um, and it's making it really difficult to turn, maybe one and a half turn top with full strength. But now, without putting too much pressure between my two boards, I actually barely push it, and it does at least one to two turns. And notice how the, the water is actually like barely moving. It's like fantastic. This 360 Tabaric uh, design works great for my needs. It cost me less than 150 euros to build, and if you follow this video, you can build it in one day. Now, if I had to make a better design, I will follow the one made by Austin Paul, 
where I will replace the baseboard with the larger one. I will raise the height of the O-ring by a few centimeters and I will introduce this skate into the extrusion frame where on the camera sides. So I will be able to support heavier camera, but also I will stabilize more the image. If this video inspired you, please like, share and subscribe. And if you have any questions or any design recommendation, please share. Until next time. Now I would like to give a massive shout out to Austin Paul who created an incredible product video online at an affordable price. His teaching inspired me and kept my creativity going. And if you join, you will be part of a community of filmmakers who are supporting each other to get better at filming commercials. To check his course and learn about innovating filming techniques, the link is in the description.